I was like busting windows. I was rebelling. In the middle of my crazy thinking, something came and banged on my door three times. I thought I saw my mom. So I came to the door like, what are you banging on my door for? And there was nobody there. If you guys don't mind my room, okay? We literally just moved out here. Like I haven't even been out here for two. Are you done? Are you done? I haven't even been out here for two weeks, so things are everywhere. What's up YouTube? It's your girl Trinity back again with another video for you guys. And I am going to talk to you guys today while I'm doing my makeup about my testimony and how I found out I wanted to minister and what type of minister I want to be. We have a special guest okay a feature okay she had to be right here by her mama daisy say hey daisy yeah anyways i did my hair honey so i was like i got this i gotta cut up on y'all a little bit i had to kick her out sorry but anyways yeah. my parents always love jesus they love god since they first got together as far as i know um my parents were saved for a long time i was raised on biblical teaching they always wanted me and my brother to understand that there was a difference between just going to church and having a relationship with God. I forgot I was supposed to be doing this. So anyways, I'm gonna be doing, putting in my context. Okay, I'm back. This is me with the hazel eyes. Back to the story about my parents. So they always taught us to have a relationship with Christ. So it was a very young age. I was seven when I remember giving my life to God. I, I didn't have this huge conversion story. I still don't have this huge conversion story. It's not like I was just like living this life and then one day something hit me and then I found Jesus. I was raised on Jesus, but I was also raised on having a relationship with Jesus. It wasn't like, you know, you have to believe in this man. I hated church at, at one point, just because I hated like, waking up early and you know like kids stuff i wanted to stay in the bed and watch cartoons this is color corrector by the way but um after hearing so many stories about this jesus i wanted him how can you not want somebody who like, saves somebody from the lion's den and parts the red sea like he got all these people out of these terrible situations all these times and then he loves us so much he died for us he died for me so i gave my life to jesus i walked up to my dad and my mom in that house and i remember and i asked them um to pray with me because i was like i want to i said i want to i want to get saved i said i literally said that i said i want to give my life to jesus and they said they looked at each other and they were like, do you know what that means? Y'all don't pay me no mind because I'm literally just kind of slapping this stuff on. And they were like, do you know what that means? And I was like, uh, yeah. And they were like, well, what does it mean? And I was like, well, I said, I want him to come into my heart. I remember saying that. I said, I want Jesus to come into my heart. And I was seven. And um, they looked at each other and they said, okay. And I said, I want to get baptized. And they just kept asking me questions to make sure that I knew what I was talking about. Now, mind you, I, I was seven, so I didn't understand all the persecution that I was going to have to go through. I didn't understand um, what it meant to live the lifestyle as a Christian, because like I said, all I knew was salvation. All I knew was a life with, with Christ. I didn't know anything else. My parents actually, they didn't just read the Bible and then live something different. They actually lived what they taught me. So that's all I knew. I didn't know, like all that cursing and they, they didn't do all of that. All that arguing in front of us, they didn't do all of that. Like they, you know, they, they were a good example. So when I got out and got older, that's when things started getting kind of like interesting. And then I remember that the church pool was, was shut down and broke down and nobody was using it. And I remember the first attack of the enemy was the day I was supposed to get baptized. I had this huge migraine. It was so bad. It, I was just determined to get baptized that day. I almost did. Literally the second I came out of the water, I didn't have a headache anymore. I wanted somebody who was a friend that stick closer than a brother. I understood that from those stories my dad used to read to me and I wanted I wanted that. Me and my brother used to be on the bus leading people to Christ in the daycares, like in after school programs and, and everything. I remember that. I remember the first person I heard say he didn't believe in Jesus and I was confused. I didn't understand the, the, 
concept of somebody not accepting Jesus. Like, why would you not want him? Like, I figured if you didn't want him, it's because you didn't know about him. I didn't, I didn't have the understanding. And this is like the third grade. I think the second grade, actually, um, where I met somebody. And I remember his name, but I ain't gonna call it. But he said that his dad taught him that that is fake and that Jesus is fake and da, 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 da. And I was like going back and forth with the boy, like not arguing, but I was like ministering. Like I was like spitting facts that I knew. And I was like trying to lead him to Christ and trying to get him to like open his mind. And I didn't realize that that's what I was doing, but that's what I was doing. It's easy when you're a kid to plant seeds. My dad always says it's easier to bend a tree when it's small. When you don't wait till it get all big and then try to bend it because now you set in your ways. So we used to be very successful and you know, leading people to Christ on the bus and kids because they were young and it was easy to teach them and they didn't have a lot of opposition coming against them other than, you know, whatever went on in their home. But we just preached that, you know, if they were going through anything that God could deliver them from it and from their whole family from it. And we used to pray with them and everything. And when I went to high school, I always felt alone. I remember always feeling like I was by myself. Like I used to try to get my friends to try to like not curse with me and to, like try to live a pure lifestyle. Cause I was struggling. Cause once I got to school, I being surrounded by people who weren't living the same lifestyle that me and my family were. It was hard. It started, it was temptation around me to curse, to, to try to be funny, to, you know, try to get a joke and, you know, just add a couple curse words. And that makes stuff more funny. And for a while, I, you know, I started to really believe that, that that makes stuff more funny. And you just add curses to it, just add emphasis. Like, they're not trying to do that, like, with me. <laughs> like, and they told me straight up, right? We're not going to promise that. We not gonna have sex. I'm I'm looking forward to having sex. That's what a few of them would say. I'm looking forward to having sex. I'm not gonna even make a promise to you that I'm not gonna have sex. And I used to be like, oh, okay. Cause you know, I was getting pressed. Yeah, 14, 15, I was getting pressed. Them boys was in that school. And I'm not gonna act like, like I said, I was, I was saved, but temptation is real, honey. It don't matter how old or how young you think you are. The devil will come for your child in many forms and in every form. He came to Jesus and tried to tempt him in every way. He sure came to me at a young age. I felt like I was always in school fighting for myself, fighting for my salvation on my own, fighting for other people's salvation because I used to go around and we. I had finally got um, all my friends in, in the cosmetology department to download the Bible app. And we'd be reading, I, you know, I, I'd be like, everybody let's just read the scripture a day. If you're sad and you're going through something, you could just go on the Bible app and click what you're going through and then they'll give you a whole bunch of Bible verses about it. But at 17, I hit a point where I got tired of fighting and I started rebelling and I started rebelling hard. And one night a spirit came knocked on my door in the middle of my foolishness. I was like busting windows, I was rebelling. In the middle of my crazy thinking, something came and banged on my door three times and stopped me. And I came running to the door, like I thought I saw my mom. So I thought it was her like being tired of me being rebellious and um, banging on my door, trying, you know, just being dramatic. And so I came to the door and opened the door like, what are you banging on my door for? And there was nobody there. And as I'm opening the door saying, what are you banging on my door for? She's walking in meeting me like, what is that noise? And I was like, that wasn't you that just banged on my door? She was like, no, I was nowhere near your door. And she just kind of looked at me like, this is spiritual warfare. See what you're inviting in the house. Do you see what you're inviting into your life? Like you need to stop. I was like, whoa, I ain't gonna lie, I thought it was cool. I was like, yo, a spirit just came and banged on my door. I didn't know if it was the spirit of God or if it was the spirit of the enemy, but I knew it was the spirit and it was cool to me like to have experienced something like that because I knew it was real. That's how I knew I was called when that happened. I knew I was called, I knew it was something different and I knew that the enemy was was warring against me to stop me from whatever I was doing. And it's hand sanitizer. But um, I knew the enemy was warring against me to stop me from whatever I was doing. And for him stop, to try to stop me from living a life that was like set apart for God. But, um, so I was excited. After that, I, that kind of gave me like a boost. 
because I knew I was doing something right. I was like, if the enemy is this threatened by me, then I know I'm supposed to live my life for Christ, and I did. Um, and I was unashamed about it. But it's still hard um, sometimes because I do feel like I'm alone a lot of times trying to do things um, without a lot of people doing it with me. But that, that is a cost, you know? You live your life for Christ, you lose people. Everybody doesn't want to live for Christ. And you can't force other people to, to live for Christ. But anyways, that's how I knew I was meant to minister. And I knew the type of minister I wanted to be. I make a lot of mistakes still. I said make, not made. I don't want to preach and minister because I do everything right. I want to preach and minister because I've done so much wrong and God still calls me and he still lets me know that I'm chosen. He's not a light hand on my behind. I, I, I'll tell you that um, quickly. I, I noticed that I could never get away with the things that other people used to get away with around me. I mean, they would go out and do stuff and then I would just try to do something. And before I could even actually do it, I was my parents are calling me. I was getting in trouble. I was getting busted out. Like I could not just, I just couldn't do the same thing that my friends used to do. And it, sometimes it was frustrating because sometimes I did just want to be bad. or you know, try to do stuff, but you know, it just never sat right with my spirit. And I knew I was called to be different and I, I just had to give it up and um, let God take control. And that's what I did. And so now I want to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to everyone. Um, not that, again, not because I'm perfect, but because I'm so imperfect. And he still calls me. And I want to show people that no matter what you've done, or what you feel like you failed that um, Christ died for your failures, because he knew you would fought, fail. That's the whole reason he died on the cross, was so that you can live a redeemed life. Touch. That's the type of, of Christian I've always been. That's why you'll see some videos of me cutting up. You'll see some videos of me talking like goofy. That's how I am. That, that's who I really am. I'm not the minister that's going to get in front of the camera and be fake for the camera. I'm not going to be fake for people. I'm going to show you who I am. I'm going to tell you who I am. I'm going to tell you about my struggles. I've always been honest about my struggles. But God continues to pick me up. I continue to repent and seek his face. I continue to seek to be a light um, and allow God to use me to be a light in this dark world, in this dark age. And, you know, that's all you can do. And so that's why I want to preach. I want to be a, I want to be a bridge. I don't want to be the person that's made it to the other side. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's these, these, uh, Levels sometimes in church and in people and in ministry, which I do believe that there are different people that are set to, to reach and to speak to different people and different levels. Um, but I want to be the bridge. I don't want to be the one who I'm so in the clouds and in the sky. You can't relate to me. I'm so on the other side. I've been saved for so long. And I, you know, back before Christ, I used to, I'm, I'm just, that, that's not my style. I'm real, I'm honest, I'm truthful, <laughs> I'm blunt, brutally honest, even with myself. People need to know that you can be that real with God. People need to know that you can be a real person, a real human being who makes real mistakes and still serve Christ. And I'm not about to get on YouTube and be in one video acting like everything's perfect and get in another video and act a mess. I want y'all to know that all of these facets of Trinity that y'all see, it's all the same person. Each one of these facets of Trinity that y'all see in these videos on JDN, on when I'm with Jada, when I'm with my friends, when I'm just with my mom with my kids, when I'm preaching and I'm giving a message, all of that is all a part of who God called to use for his glory. I'm a mess. I'm no mess that's too big for God to clean up and to use. And I know that and I'm appreciative and honored that he cherishes me that way. And I want other people to know that he wants to do the same for them and with them. So that's the type of minister I am. I don't wanna be so on the other side that people feel like they can't reach me, they can't touch me, they can't talk to me. I want you to know 
yeah um i did that too yeah i struggled with that too and i was in christ not before christ when i was in christ i made mistakes big ones not just little ones so it's like people need to see that you know pastors like to talk about 60 years ago before they get christ no talk about how you just thought about cheating on your wife two weeks ago in the grocery store when you saw this fine woman walk by you talk about it talk about how you had to run and flee from temptation talk about the fact that the thought crossed your mind talk about the fact that you used to be an addict and from time to time when you get real 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 low it still crosses your mind like my dad says you know um thoughts are like birds they can fly by your head all day but just don't let them make a nest that's all but you know, thoughts still come. Temptation is still real. It doesn't go away when you give your life to Christ. And you don't become perfect when you give your life to Christ. And I wanna be the person that lets people know that it's okay to be imperfect. Now don't live in it, don't wallow in it, don't walk in imperfection intentionally. You make every, every day you make a choice to try to live for Christ the best way you can. But I wanna be the person who lets people know that it's okay and that you are still valuable to Christ and he can still use you in big ways on platforms even if it's as little as a grocery store it's fine you know even if it's just at your job that's fine but he can use you in big ways he takes the foolish things of the world to confound the wise don't ever don't ever count yourself out from what God can do through you and through your life but anyways I love you guys and I gotta make another video so Thank you guys for joining me. Sorry if this took too long. What do you guys think? Please subscribe. Subscribe. Why wouldn't you subscribe? If you love me, you'll subscribe. But anyways, um, I love you guys. See you in the next video. Bye.